a super rare 2019 Porsche 935 Moby Dick race car. A car that you can't even drive on the street is for sale on Bring a Trailer. Will it bring millions of dollars just to sit in someone's garage? Let's find out. No! Big Nerds is your daily YouTube car game show where we predict the online auction results of the most interesting cars on Bring a Trailer, Cars and Bids, Parity Marketplace, and more. It's just like the Price is Right game show. Play along and see if you can beat the nerds. We are going to do the 2019 Porsche 935 selected wait, by JP. Wait, the I thought you didn't want to do this one. We're doing it anyways. You he did say he changed his mind. Oh, okay. All right. All right. So this okay. 935 was picked by JP. It's a premium listing on Bring a Trailer. So I mean, it's probably been up for two weeks, uh, but our car closes tomorrow. Located in Concord, Ontario, Canada, showing 945 kilometers, which is about 587 miles, is this unbelievably limited edition Uber track beast that Porsche made on the 99. One platform, so it's a 991.2 platform, uh, but they made it as a homage to the 935 Turbo. So what you're looking at essentially is a GT2 sort of club sport track special. It's not a homologated race car. This is a car that they expected. You know, I mean, you, you I'm sure you could race it, but I think they expected some of their best billionaire clients to buy this car and keep it at the the emerging proliferating country club track scene like spring mountain and um uh what's the one uh mental down here in palm springs uh fair what's it called thermal thermal, thermal yeah, yeah i was gonna say fahrenheit man yeah, but anyway um so it's a car that you would keep and take out and do some hot laps and scare the hell out of your girlfriend uh porsche made 77 examples of this car in 2019 this one is the 13th um track only non-homologated homage to the 935 unbelievable car um just just i mean look at it it's sick uh the the thing that kind of i don't want to say rubs me the wrong way i wish this car had a livery i mean as it's a homage to the 935 pick any of porsche's classic liveries over the years and slap it over the carbon fiber uh bodywork uh, obviously that can still be done with a wrap which is what they would have been done originally um but uh i while it's cool to see all the carbon on this car i think this car would would ultimately garner a little more eyeball if it had a livery if it um you know you got to sell the fantasy going down the road and this car being an all body and carbon um just lacks a little something from me that being said uh as good a driver as i might think i am this is an unbelievable performance car and uh it would probably take um quite a few days and quite a few lessons to warm up to uh flirting with the limit that this car has that is ultimately higher um than my um uh, clenched butt cheeks would allow me to go to but a beautiful car i think they did a fantastic job at it jp you and i were at a uh, rent sport when this car debuted um i i remember it fondly it was uh it's pretty bodacious but here is one of the rare 77 for the world cars in canada it's on bat bat has sold one previously uh that car had less than 100 miles on it and it sold for one million six hundred and twenty six thousand dollars so, John, I send this car back over to you. Um, aside from being one of the coolest looking 911s there is, what else do you like about this thing? <sighs> I this is a car that's just never going to be driven. It's going to be. I mean, I just it's such a it's such a sad thing to see these. Um, it it is something to behold. Uh, seeing one in real life is just awe inspiring. And I mean. It just makes you kind of tear up a little bit when you do see one because you know it's never going to move on its own power. It's just going to it's going to be driven from one museum to another, and maybe it'll do a lap or two at Ren Sport, you know, the next Ren Sport or something like that. But it'll be at like thirty five miles an hour or something. I mean, I, it, the, you just Porsche makes a masterpiece, and then 
you know, no one drives it. It's just, it's just sadness to me. Uh, and I, honestly, if I had the money, if I was a gajillionaire, even I'd be kind of scared to drive it because I mean, it's all carbon fiber. If you bump into anything, whatever part it is that you bump into is now ruined and you'll never be able to make another one again and you'll destroy the whole car. It's just, it's just <laughs> carbon fiber. You can't fix carbon fiber once it cra- oh, man, wait, <laughs> You should buy JP this car. Scared <laughs> JP scared he's going to tub the 935. Come on, I man. Am. Just I get just out there. Just and- drive this thing. I'm going to swap it to a manual. I'm going to get Dr- it. I'm going to take the Drinks. manual out of my 964, and I'm going to put it in yeah. this, and, uh, and then I'll drive it. Yeah, what yeah. do you think? Yeah, wait. <laughs> yeah, you know, I think your your fears are justified, but, look, if you have, you know, $2 million to spend on a car, you're not going to care if the carbon fiber cracks. Then how like, come there? I've never seen one for, with more than, like, 800 miles on it. Hey, I, I'm, I'm not saying they will do it. I'm just saying it shouldn't be a concern because yeah. you know this isn't the one and only Porsche you have. You have 87 yeah. other Porsches and this is the one you don't have and now you do and hopefully it does get driven but I agree this is the kind of car that like gets paraded on a track for one lap at like a Porsche event mm-hmm. and then parked out front in front of all the other ones, yeah. which is kind of a shame. And I agree with you, Michael, dude, this should have had some sort of wrap or livery or something. Most of them did, don't they? Yeah. To sell, to sell the dream, sell the yeah. idea, make it something interesting. Um, like from my perspective, even like as a collector or as somebody who would be interested in this car, it just kind of looks like some weird carbon fiber race car. That's in some guy's shop, not like this beautiful, you know, super rare Porsche with all this history and all this um, provenance. So um, kind of a weird way to represent it, but it's not going to matter. There's, you know, a few dozen of these cars in the world and they're going to pay as much money as possible to be the one guy in the Porsche club that has this or the one billionaire on the block that has this. Mantle, you getting one? I, I'm i with you. This is terrible. This is, it's, it's, it's sad. Uh, it just, you know, no one buys this car for what it is, which is an engineering marvel. And and the presentation, this is just a fantastic ad. The photos, everything on there. But, you know, even if you're not worried about the carbon fiber, if you're just buying this to show that yours is bigger than everybody else's, you're, you're buying this so that you go straight to the VIP table at every Porsche show you show up at. Oh, I'll bring my 935. Of course, we'll give you the super gold-plated status where you sit on the third floor instead of the second floor and you'll drink real champagne instead of sparkling apple wine and blah, 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 blah. And no <laughs> one will. We have not ever covered a car on this show that I would have less than this one. There, the, every car that I've ever sat behind this desk on, I would rather have than this one, not because of what this car can do, but because of what it represents. I'd rather have that automatic speedster. I'd rather have that automatic uh, Canadian sport purple interior car because this is this is the definition of a device that will never get to live up to its hope. I, I would go buy an old 60s 962 over this. There, there There's just no interest in anything about this car. If they gave it to me, I would beat on it like it owed me money until it died because then it gets to live out its destiny as this wonderful engineering spectacle. God damn. I might have to actually respect my mental for a change. That's a, uh, it's a good take, man. Cause it, it's true. I mean, what the hell Porsche? I mean, they call it the Moby Dick. Uh, and I guess there's a good reason for it because it's just for dicks. You, there is no person that buys this car who isn't a goddamn dick or a Bond villain, right? I mean, but if but you that, have the money for this car, you have exploited hundreds of thousands of people. Yeah, but there's no, but oh. the Bond villains don't exist, right? This is who buys this thing, but an asshole. Show me someone that buys this and drives the hell out of it, and I will retract that. Um, sh- but right. it's Rami, just, get, Rami's on line too. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> okay, Rami right. would. Rami would absolutely run this thing down through the canyon. Absolutely, <laughs> yeah. Rami would drive it on the street. He Rami would, would not care, street, right? And no, no. So no, Rami needs to sell his company so he can buy this one and 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 change the formula. Uh, but that that's it. You, I mean, this car is only for a flex, uh, and that's just lame because I mean Pagani's and. All you know, Veyrons and some of those that are worth even more money than these, you know, at least those, at least, you know, the rappers and stuff like that are actually driving those cars around on the street. You know, the guys that get these are just like, mm-hmm. so how much will some dick pay for this thing, Michael Deeb? All right, JP, I'm glad you asked. So, first things first, our car costs about 
$1.1 million. And that includes $82,000 for shipping, which I assume they put it on a Concorde jet. Um, and then it included a spare parts package, which was $43,000. Um, so $1.1 million to buy the car. The last one sold for $1,626,000. And that car had 90 something miles on it, less than a hundred miles. This car has 600 miles, which means it's actually turned a few laps in anger and they've actually put a tank of gas in it. Um, but it's worth noting that our car closes tomorrow and is already sitting at $1,600,000 on five bids. So my bid on this car is that it will not get another bid and that the person who bid it up from like 500000 to $1.6 million is essentially saying, I'll buy the car. And at one6 that's all the money, according to the comps. Um, the one that had less than 100 miles uh, had the um, had an iconic livery on it. And uh, and this car does not. I, I think that car was better looking and had lower mileage. Um, so here you go. I think at one6 that's it. I don't think it gets another bid, and I think it sells for that number. So $1.6 million to you, JP. Uh, I'm going to go $1.6,935. I'm going to just dip it right over. I actually agree with you. Um, damn it. I was going to say the same thing. I thought I was going to dip out. Uh, but, yeah, I, I think it. I think it's done. Um, I think you start getting that kind of money. There's cars that you can actually drive. Um and, uh, and yeah, the fact that you, these aren't street legal, uh, really narrows it down. Um, and so it would have to be, like I said, either a Dick or Rami, um, because yeah. Rami's the only guy that would actually drive it on the street. Um, yeah. What do you think? Yeah. Wait, the, the other thing too, is that, uh, somebody has to break, if it, we're presuming that it's going to sell in the United States, somebody's gonna have to import it into the U S mm. so there's, there's money left to be spent on it to get it back. Across I'll bring it. Board. I'll, I'll drive it. It's no problem. <laughs> yeah, you will. yeah, there you go. Um, yeah, you know, if you didn't... what are you talking about, mental? <laughs> you you drive MR twos. Sorry, right. wait. Sorry, sorry about that. No, you're fine. Um, <laughs> you know, I have to say, if you didn't tell me what it was at, I would have guessed 1.4, 1.45, because it's a Canadian car, because it has 900 and something miles, which is, is like yeah. ten times more miles than any of the other cars have had. So mm -hmm. I'm kind of surprised that it got that much. But I wonder if these just aren't coming to market anymore. I wonder yeah. if this is just the one this year, and next year there may not be any for sale. Um, I'll, I, you know, I really didn't think it would even go that high, but maybe there's two people now who actually really want it. So I'll give it another 50 grand. I'll say $1,650,000 just to give one more bid in there. Because at that point, like if you bid 1.6, what's another 50 or a hundred, just throw it in there. See yeah. if you get it. Just throw it in there. See if you get it. Where are you at mental? So, uh, I'm being called out here. They're asking, you know, would you rather drive that MR2? Yes. Would you rather drive the uh, Cabro with the blue shift knob? Yes. I would rather drive that red MR2 that sends me into a rage every time than, uh, than having this thing. But, uh, 1.5999 and, uh, it's not going to sell. Uh, you know, this is, it's, it's, and, and, and if it does sell, it's, well, it's wait, selling. You can't, all right. you can't go lower than where it's at. Oh, I apologize. All right. 1.6999. Uh, and it's not going to sell because the guy's just flexing on everybody to let him know. And if he does sell, he's selling it to another Canadian million or American millionaire. And it'll, <clears throat> and it's just to, to show that they're on there. Uh, I think most everyone agrees. This is a, a giant douche mobile. It's, it's, it, it is. And it's, it's not the car's fault. This is a fascinating car and is well presented. And we also got some data from one of our Canadian friends who says that it's a Canadian tire motorsports and this PFAF guys, they are known for doing all the prep for the dealer race teams. Yeah. So there's, there's yeah. nothing wrong with the car. It's just not even what this car represents. It's just the person that buys the car. Yeah, I mean, a CGT is around a couple million dollars, right? I mean, and you can drive those, and they made a few of them. They didn't make, you know, 77. They made hundreds of them, or maybe. How many, how now, many CGTs were there? Yeah, 1,300. 1,300, the, yeah. the CGT, one, is a convertible. Mm -hmm. Two, has a passenger seat. And three, has a glorious, normally aspirated V10 that revs to like 8,000 RPM. I would take a CGT over this car all day long. Yeah, all so right, now why didn't they make, why didn't they just make like 500 of these or something or 935 of these? They probably could have sold them all uh even even if the cuz what was the list price again of this car deep when it was new? 1.1. 1.1. So if they yeah. made 930 
five of these, they probably could have sold every single one of them for $900,000, especially at that time. Uh, because yeah. that was in, you know, man, things were crazy uh, going into that era. So I, I think they would have sold all of them. They would have sold, made way more money uh, if they had made it just a little bit more street ready. And yeah, go ahead. We, we do have Nerd, an option. But since we're the- nerds, sit, go ahead, mental. No, 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 go finish your point. I'm sorry. As as we are nerds, I think that they couldn't have made them street legal because I think what makes it look like a Moby Dick is a long front overhang mm. and a long rear overhang. I don't think this car will go in and out of the mall, out of the driveway, in and out of the mall. So that's, yeah, that's not a qualification for street legal. There is a theory out there now. Anthony, his official bid was all of the money, and what was interesting about that is then the nerd herd agreed they would all spend all of Anthony's money on this car and anthony <laughs> he spent it all on sponsoring the show he doesn't have any money guys he what are you did talking about? Yeah, but know, yeah. anthony has promised yeah. that he will and in JP fact he bought a new beard with mental's hair <laughs> he will in fact mental write hair. the check and he will drive it home from canada if you buy the speedster wait what? uh, what's going on ooh. right there anthony said he'll write the check drive it home if you buy the speedster i'm confused he'll write the check for what that for this car for the 935 because everyone agrees that they would all spend all of anthony's money to own this car all right okay sure <laughs> i'm not sure where, where, how i benefit from any of this at all <laughs> you get a new speedster you get a new speedster i think in order yeah. to cement this to sort of shake hands on take a deal, sawzall to are, my windshield before I do that. since we are live on the air is <laughs> jp should bid on a speedster right now in front of all of us we're all watching <laughs> we're all watching pull up the speedster mental and then jp go ahead and put a bid in yeah, I've but already, then, I already closed it. I'm sorry. But then PCAR Market will put a hold on my credit card for like eight weeks. Hey guys, I got to tell you about our friends, Godin Porsche of Las Vegas and Godin Classic. If you're looking for a new Porsche or a classic, you've got to call our friend Steve at Godin. Save yourself the hassle of screwing around with all the auctions like we always talk about and just talk to Steve. He'll find you the classic Porsche you're looking for. Godin Porsche of Las Vegas. Hey guys, you're probably looking at your watch and wondering if bid nerds will ever end. So you better talk to our friends at Our Smiths to make sure your Rolex, Tag Hauer, AP, or any fine timepiece is in tip top shape. Our Smiths, fine Swiss repair. The 2019 Porsche 935, um, this is a track only special. This is a car to literally just show off. It, it, you can't just pull out your wallet and show people a bank statement. But if you invite people to the track to watch you do hot laps in your, um, you know, mil- we decided $1.1 million limited edition Porsche, uh, that would be perfectly acceptable for letting everybody know you uh, crushed it in the last bull run. Um, our car was in Concord, Ontario, Canada. The uh, selling receipts showed that it was about $1.1 million. It was the 13th example of 77 of these cars built to commemorate the original 935 that helped cement Porsche's racing legacy by turbocharging the 911 and developing into an incredible um, uh, dominant car in sports car racing throughout Europe and the United States. Uh, This particular car has 945 kilometers. And while I know my colleagues in studio spent 20 minutes clamping down on people that don't drive their cars, I would suggest, and I think if Mental were to step back and think about this, 600 miles on a track only car that's only a couple of years old and costs 1.1 million dollars i'd say this guy's been driving this car and i'm i'm actually impressed it's got 600 miles of track you know hours i know it's not that many laps but but this car is certainly not a garage queen it's not under 100 miles like the last one we saw transact for 1.62 so with that in mind our car was at one million six hundred thousand dollars on five bids when we reviewed it I got to start the bidding, and based on the comp uh, that had sold um, earlier in 2023, I suggested that this car would not get another bid and sell for $1.6 million. JP said I stole his bid and offered to uh, put his bid at $1,600,935. Uh, Wade was a bit more optimistic, going $1,650,000. And Mental was the most optimistic of us all, coming in at $1,699,900. Um, any wild bids in the herd there, uh, Randy? Uh, let's see. It's it looks like, Randy's like, uh, the, yeah. like Randy's on the show without a camera, you know? 
Everyone agreed, and look, some people were like bidding below what it was when, when <laughs> you know, <laughs> vampires like oh, one point three million. It's like, dude, it's already at one point six, and that's what kind of you know when we play this game, you know, <laughs> it's like uh, it's like Texas Hold'em, right? It's like positioning, right? Where where are yeah. you? What you know? Where's the button? All that kind of stuff, you know. And you were in the first position, and you got to take yeah. first bid, and you yep. had the advantage. Going, look, it's one point six, not getting any more, and I agreed with you. Yeah. So I was like, uh, I don't know, what is nine hundred eleven dollars yeah. on top of that? So if I get to bid first, does that mean I have the blinder or the blinder's right next to me? Yeah, you? right. Um, <laughs> I think it means you got the blinder, right? Um, yeah. And JP, JP, let me just ask you this. Mm. When we look at the bids and we see several bids that came in under where the car was at when we were talking about it, does that mean you said inflation a lot before we got to this car and half the herd is drunk? <laughs> is that what happened? Haven't said it once this episode, so everyone's sober. I don't know. I can't remember back then because I was drunk, um, which I usually am doing this show. Clearly, uh, yeah, this car, uh, $1.6 million. I mean, look, there's just so many better. There's just so much better. Look, you know what? No matter how much, if this car would have went for $2 million, $2.5 million, this car yeah. is for the ultimate douchebag. And this car, like this car... <laughs> Would not be allowed on the Hill Country Rally that's coming up no. in a couple of months, right? No, 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 doesn't matter no, no. how expensive your car is. It matters what year it is. You, If it's past 89, you can't bring it. It's got to yeah. be an 89 or older, you know, sports car. I, I think the yeah. Hill Country Rally is all 911s, right? Can You, you right. can bring 356s and stuff like that. So, um, I know F. F and G body only, period. F and G story. body only. There you go. Yep. So, you know, this is a car that doesn't matter how how big your pockets are. And that's the problem a lot of times with, with car buyers and car enthusiasts and car flexors. They got to have the most expensive thing uh, and they got to show that they have the most expensive thing. And I just don't, I mean, I... I guess if you're just a super track rat and you're also a billionaire, yeah, I guess why not get one of these? But, you know, I don't know any of these guys. <laughs> uh, Mental, what do you think of the result? Uh, so Buddha went and did the research on this and figured mm. out that Canadian uh, tire motorsports track is 2.5 miles, which means this car covered roughly 240 laps, which if you figure out about 20 laps a track day, it's about 12 track days. So I am still not impressed that this car was driven. What? Away. Oh, come on, man. That's, yeah. It's not a spec job, Miata. Buddha. It's a one point million dollar, you know, limited edition. No, no, and again, car. but that's, it, which which the guys just drove it, it. It just underscores my point, and it wasn't even about to test their metal as a driver. Yeah, but it how was, many times it was you, the look at all my mm, money. Yeah, yeah. I mean, how many times you go to historics or you go to uh, Rensport and you see guys ripping around in you know multi million dollar nine elevens all the time? You know, classic stuff. Sure, um, this isn't a classic though. I don't understand what, so what? That's my point is that the yeah. classic, the cars that are worth even more than this oh, are yeah, getting yeah. driven so, more yeah. than this. So we're in agreement. Yeah, yeah, yes, yeah. Exactly. we are absolutely in agreement on this one. Yeah. So I don't know what a, what a dork. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to the uh, research department, though. Thanks, Buddha, for yeah, doing Buddha, the math wow. there. Yeah. Um, Buddha, and now to Buddha in archives. What do you got for us, Buddha? <laughs> <laughs> Buddha's down. Remember the movie Red, and he's like uh, Ernest Borgnine down in the you know nobody the elevator mo- goes to a floor. <laughs> nobody remembers no? the movie Red. Right. Hey guys, thanks for watching this clip of the Bid Nerds podcast. Play along with us live every Sunday and Wednesday night at six thirty p.m. on YouTube. And see if your bids stack up to the rest of the nerd herd in the chat live. Thanks for hanging out, and we'll see you on the next episode. Nerd!